In. That is, uh, you know what, it's nice to be on a golf course, even though I'm just filming on it for uh, what is a long-term project, uh, something I'm doing with Wallasey Golf Club at the moment, and uh, really interesting, more on that in the future. But for now, this is about uh, how, well, it's a simple one. Have you ever wondered what is the longest seven iron that is out there right now? I know that I have, and that's why I'm doing the video, because don't forget, not everybody is looking for the same thing from their golf clubs, and some people do need a better help, and these stronger lofted irons have given them that help, that bit of extra yardage and extra distance. What we're gonna find out today is, is it all about loft? So is the strongest lofted gonna be the one that goes the furthest, or is it gonna be a combination of uh, a number of factors that get that ball out there and end up being the longest? There's only one way to find out, Start this car, get ourselves off to four golf, go on at some golf balls and find out what is the longest seven iron that is out there right now. We'll soon find out. Right, so as I said in the intro, let's not forget this is all a bit of fun, but I'm certainly interested to find out what this is. And in theory, the strongest lofted club is gonna be the longest. If everything is based on loft, equates to distance. But will that be the case? We've got six irons that we're gonna be looking at and let's put these in some kind of order. The strongest lofted is the Titleist T400, incredibly at 26 degrees. We've then got the Maverick iron, 27 degrees. And then you look at the Simmax, 28.5. The Big Bertha B21 on the Hot Melt at 29. And the G710 from Ping is 29.5 degrees. So if we put them in sort of a descending order, the weakest lofted being the G710 should be the shortest. And like I said, up there at the top end will be the Titleist T400. But that's on the assumption that everything is based on loft equates to distance. But will it be? So me taking the mick out of your shoes. Will... No, it wasn't. So comments down below about my shoes. Jimmy doesn't like them. Just come on here for two minutes just to give me a bit of abuse. What would be your opinion? What is the strongest? What is the furthest iron out of this batch that I've got? Which do you reckon is going to be the furthest? No, I'm asking you. You. You first of all. You don't know. You don't know anything, no, but what do you think? Any opinions? T400 is in there. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a wall up outside. I'm going to hit the, I haven't collected data yet. Data's coming next. I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for the bait to put yeah. Seeing as you double booked it. One thing that has interested me a great deal is that I know we're all talking about what is the longest iron out there, but there's a bit of an interesting one that it has thrown up, putting those heads together, laid out on the floor, looking at them directly from above. There's a noticeable difference in profile and you've got the likes of the Maverick, which is fairly thick and as is the B21, but then it certainly slims down towards that. Uh, the Ping G710 was thinner than what I expected it to be in terms of its profile. And as we already know, so is that uh, JPX921 hot metal, which is the club I'm using right now. So even though you might want a bit of distance in your irons, you still now can get it in terms of that power spec loft, but in a smaller, more compact profile and certainly what I'd have expected to see it address. Right, I'm going to kick things off and start collecting data with the Maverick, one of the chunkier irons. I'm going to make my way down to the bottom end of that G710 and uh, also the, uh, the JPX. But before we go any further, don't forget, click down below in that comment section, which one do you think is going to go the furthest? It's a great help when you get involved in the comments and don't forget, if you do like what you're watching, please consider hitting that subscription button and maybe hitting a like as well. Anyway, let's get things going. We're warmed up. 
that's a decent start with a Maverick. I fell with this one, we needed a good warm up. This is all about swinging it as hard as I can, finding just how far we can get these seven irons out there. Don't forget, all a bit of fun. Get your comments down below, which one is the longest? You know, there's one thing I will say is that where we are right now with irons of this type compared to we were maybe even just two years ago is a huge difference. People that sort of suggest that technology hasn't moved on. And I'm not referring to about loft or how far a ball goes or all those different things. It's just about just a feel for one thing straight away. We've got five irons here that they perform so well across the board. And like I said, you would have picked up these type of clubs maybe a year or two ago and there were sacrifices that you had to make. The only sacrifice I can see you make from going to these, whether you like the loft thing or not, that's a different story. But the only sacrifice is really the profile of the club. Everything else is very much a positive on how these things perform. Yes, they help with distance, but they also help with the way the ball launches. And even so much as how this ball is spinning in terms of control is also a noticeable difference. Right, so a video that started off as uh, quite a bit of fun. Yes, it was. Finding the longest seven iron is uh, in many ways neither here nor there, but it was an interesting thing to do. And what I learned a lot along the way, uh, as I always do with this testing, I always say dry ball data is kind of, uh, can be a little bit tedious, but at the end of the day, it tells a tale. And it certainly did in this longest seven iron test. If you want to know what the longest seven iron was on the test, it was, and I'm going to read from the screen, it was the Maverick. And it was a Maverick, and the longest I recorded was 182.6 yards carry, 5,000 touching on spin. It was only 81.9 club head speed, and that's relative in a minute. 126 ball speed, launching at 13.5, descent angle at 42.3. There was another ball in there as well that you've seen on screen, which is not too dissimilar but with a slightly better land angle. Now, and I say slightly better and why this has become an interesting test rather than just about what was the longest. First of all, it once again dispelled this idea that the longest, the strongest loft would be the longest. The T400 didn't perform uh, as you would have expected it to. And what I'm gonna do is rather than go through each individual set of numbers, I'm gonna put them right at the very end and for those of you who are interested in data, then it is a, a worthwhile read and analyze them. But obviously this video would literally go on forever if I went through every piece of data. But what you will see is this. Yes, like I said, the strongest lofted didn't necessarily uh, produce the longest um, carry. But what they all did extremely well, and the fascinating bit for me was the overall performance was really good from all these clubs. As I said again in the video, people need different things. Some people need a help with distance, with ball speed, with launch angle. These clubs did, every one of them did exactly that. Um, but they all did it with great spin number, good launch angle, good descent angle, and all those things are very much relevant. And peak height again, I mean, some of these things were coming down out the clouds. So they very much performed like ball flight characteristics of what I would see from a seven iron, albeit that longer carry distance. But like I said, for a lot of people, that will be a help. But the other interesting thing was, again, just on that looks factor, they've improved so much, this kind of club. You'd have maybe, you know, you were looking at the real sort of chunky irons to get this kind of performance. Uh, out of uh, what is classed as, I suppose, a super game improvement iron. But everything's been, you know, there's a, there's a more streamlined approach in that G710, which again, that thinner top line, it, it, there's, an, there's something in there for everybody. And I think, again, the lesson learned is this. Don't dismiss clubs because of loft. Don't dismiss clubs because of a category that they've put into. Sometimes by the manufacturer as well, I think it's a, you know, a fatal mistake on their part. Lots of us would benefit from these type of irons where there's loads of help, but we're not giving up lots in terms of um, the performance. Yes, there's drop-offs, the spin number's not as good as what you would get in a 34 degree seven iron. Obviously it's not, but those launch angles are still good. 
The, the drop-off in spin, how much is it really going to impact on your performance when you play golf? Would you benefit more from the extra help in distance, from the extra help in launch, than you perhaps would in that little bit of a drop-off in a spin number? They're the questions I'd be asking myself when I was choosing my set of irons that were relative to me. But anyway, that's it. Like I said, in the main, a bit of fun just to find out what the longest seven iron was out there, but wait till the end look through that data and you'll see there was a fair bit more learnt through this test along the way. Right, as I ever say, and I should say it a bit uh, earlier on in the video, and I don't actually always say it, is if you like what you're seeing in terms of this channel, then please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, if you like what you've seen in this video, hit the like. If it is that you don't like it, then uh, I would just leave well alone, never come back to this channel ever again. I don't blame you. Anyway, for those of you who do, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you all soon.